In this video, I'm going to talk about charts and specifically eight things you can do to make them easier to read for your users. And so in front of me, I've got some data that I downloaded from the Bureau of Economic Analysis. It just shows auto sales by month and it also includes the average dollars as well. So to keep things simple off the bat, I've just created a simple chart here that just shows the unit sales in millions just to, just to get things started here. And so one of the very first things that I'm going to say, number one, is you should always have a legend, especially when you're dealing with more than one item. Like if we're just talking about total sales, then we probably don't need it. But because here we've got both foreign and domestic sales it w or foreign and domestic cars, it would be helpful here to, you know, add a legend. And to do that, it's not terribly hard. You just select the chart, go to chart design add chart elements and then you go down to legend and you can select either off to the right to the top left or the bottom now especially when you've got um, got a legend that you know can take up a, a fair bit of space i always find it's easier to put it either on the top or the bottom just so it doesn't put squeeze your your chart off to one side or the other so in this case i'm going to select the bottom just because i find that a bit easier to uh, uh to add now, another thing that I always like to do, especially with column charts, is shrink these gaps. Because right now there's there's a bit of a gap here between a bit of a white space between these chart between these bars. And I prefer to shrink that a little bit. And to do that, I'm gonna right click format data series. And then on this section of the right here, there is a, something called gap width. And right now it's set at 219%. And normally I set it to 50% just to make it a bit tighter and so that the gaps are are smaller just so it's gonna take just so there's a bit less white space in there without without necessarily being too crowded um, another thing that you also want to do is really consider putting a descriptive header I mean you could just put auto sales but the thing is that isn't necessarily gonna be too helpful because you know people can already see that okay there's there's sales in here and so you know, it could be helpful to put in, you know, by month in the U.S. So you're spe uh, specifying which market. And then maybe even add a subheader that says, you know, domestic versus foreign cars. And then let's say bold this top one. Set it to black. Maybe shrink this subheader. You know, just so it's a bit easier to read. And so, so when someone glosses over it, you can easily see what this chart is about. Now, one of the things that sometimes can be difficult with these charts is, you know, you're looking at these and it's like February 21, like I, I can't tell. This looks like it's slightly below 2.5, is it 2.4 maybe, right? That's the right amount. But what about this one? This one is 2.8, right? You're, you're sort of guesstimating what it looks like based on the chart. So one thing that you can do to help your readers is add some data labels. And so if I right click, add data labels, it's going to add that. Now it's going to select it only. It's going to add it only for the bar charts that I've selected. So if I want to add it for these gray ones as well, I'll do the same thing. Right click, add data labels. And now if you want to, you can format these data la data labels so that they include more information. Like let's say series number. I mean, obviously I don't want to do that in this case because it's going to add too much. Um, you got category name, um, value. No, we don't value from sales, but there's other information that you can add in here. And in this example, it's probably not going to be terribly useful. Like if you've got a, um, a pie chart, that's where you might want to add some more details as to the series name and other information like percentages. But when dealing with a column chart, uh, the numbers are probably sufficient in this case. And, you know, if you don't like them taking up as much space, what you can do is shrink these down to, say, a size 7 maybe. And then set them to a gray color just so they're not taking up too much space or not standing out too much, right? So you can adjust this the way you would adjust any other text in Excel. Just straight from the Home tab, you can make these changes. Okay. Now, another thing you can do is if you if you don't like the the uh, data labels and you prefer not to see these numbers in the way here, what you can do is go to the chart design tab 
and add chart element and there's a data table which might work a bit better you can have it with legend keys and without with legend keys probably a bit easier because you can uh, see it matches up with the color so if I spread this out now the good th the cool thing about this is now I can see those numbers on here and they're not in my chart specifically right now the one thing that looks a little goofy is you know you've got the dates here and then you've got them again on the axis now you could delete this, but the problem is now all of a sudden now, you, now it's kind of hard to match. Okay, which one's November, which one's January. So I'm not going to do that. Instead, I'm going to show you another thing you can do. And if I right click on this, the format axis, if I go under, under the number, this is how it's formatted. Now, a cool trick you can do if you don't want something to show up, you don't have to worry about setting it to a white font or matching it with the background in case you use other font. You could just use three semicolons. And if I hit add, it disappears. So it doesn't matter what color it is, it's just not going to show up because in Excel, those semicolons um, tell Excel, you know, this, this, they, they separate them into sections to say, okay, this is how it should look like if the, if the numbers are positive, negative, or if there's nothing. And so if I put three semicolons with nothing in there, that tells me show nothing, regardless of whether it's positive or negative or zero. And so the cool thing is, now it disappears. And now I've got a clean table here that I can see this relates to October, this relates to November, this one's December, without necessarily necessarily messing up the chart. So it's an easy way to, to do that. One other thing I always like to do with every chart, um, you know, whether you're including it into a Word document for a report or a PowerPoint presentation, or even if you just want to use it in Excel, I don't like the borders of it just because it it doesn't blend well with the background. For instance, if I turned off grid lines here, you know, it, it stands out. It's, you know, I don't think it really adds anything. Unless you really like it, I would suggest selecting the, the format chart area under border, hit no line. And now all of a sudden it's a whole lot smoother and you know you can still adjust it move it around easily and um it just makes it a whole lot cleaner and easier to to do now so up until this point i've only been using the unit sales but what i'm going to do now is i'm going to add the averages and so the challenge that i'm going to have here is you'll notice the average dollars are in the thousands here Right, whereas the units sold are in a million. So these are, you know, these are not going to go terribly high. It's going to be within a range of zero to three. Whereas the, the dollar values are going to be in tens of thousands. You know, it looks like between, you know, 25 and, you know, 33,000. 33, so it's not going to work on a scale. It's going gonna, it's gonna to make the, the units not visible at all just because um, the dollar values are going to be a lot bigger. And so the scale is going to have to accommodate them. So, so first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to change the data that I've selected. And so what I can do here is right now it's selecting all the way to column two or row two. I want it to select all the way to row five. And now Excel is going to know what I'm doing. But again, see the problem here is now I don't see these uh, these unit sales. I see the dot. The, the averages, which is not very helpful because um, I want to see everything. So I can do change series chart type and I go all the way to the combo by default. And so this is where, you know, I can use um, uh, different, uh, different charts based on, based on my data series. So for the average, I'm going to use a line chart. So I want to make sure I'm selecting line chart just for the for the averages and then the cut clustered column for the unit sales now right now you see in the preview it still does not look right even though I've got um, you know multiple uh, multiple chart types in here because the thing is I need to plot them on different axes on different axes so by default I've got my primary axis on the left and if I check off to add a secondary axis there's gonna be another one on the right and so it really doesn't matter which one I select here, whether it's the average price or whether it's the unit sales, I just I just need to be consistent here. So I'm going to select the average as my secondary axis. And so now all of a sudden you see my 
bars come back and I've got the line charts. So I've got everything all in one place now. So now the, the key thing to remember when you're dealing with the secondary axis, you, you have to remember which one is which, right? And it's like my line, line charts relate to this axis on the right. This is the secondary axis for the average dollars. Whereas the millions of, of, of cars sold, that relates this axis on the left. So as long as you're okay with that, then this is a really easy way where you know you can accommodate multiple chart types and have multiple axes and show a little bit of everything all in one place. Okay, so one last um, uh, item I'm gonna go over is how to show negative values in a different color. So right now I've got my unit sales, I got my average dollars, and I don't really have any negative values in here. So what I'm gonna do now is just move this chart off to the side and let's say I'm gonna create another another item, another another row for total unit sales. And I'm just gonna add these values here just so I've got everything. And then what I'm gonna do is now for the total I'm gonna say change in sales so I just want to see the month over month sales and so what I'm going to do is take November's total and subtract October just so I see the month over month change and just to make this a bit cleaner I'm just going to copy this down as a separate uh, value I'm going to paste these values just so I don't have to worry about those formulas and so now what, what I'm going to do is be able to map these so I can easily see month over month what the what the changes look like. So now if I go to insert a column chart, you know the cool thing is here I've got the, the month over month change. Right? So I can do the changes that I did before, let's say set it to 50%, so I don't have terribly big gaps. The one thing you'll notice with negatives is once you've got negatives is this axis automatically goes in the middle here which again it can make it difficult to read because you know, depending on the colors that you're using it, it could make it hard to see the month so one thing you could do here is if I right click on this to format axis then um, what I can do is for these labels here I can put the label position set to low and that'll put them neatly down here. And so that makes it obviously easier to easier to read and not worry about, you know, what colors you're using for your charts, for your bar charts. And so right now these are these values are all in in blue and I mean it's fine you can see which ones are going down, which ones are going up, but if you want to quickly glance at you know whether they're positive or negative, it doesn't doesn't help stand out and one thing you could do is on the format data series section again go to this paint bucket here you'll notice I can set a fill um, color so right now it's set to blue but what I really want is for them to invert if negative so I click this off you'll notice right away it changed this to white and now my positives are in blue this doesn't look terribly good so let's say I want to change it to my, my default color to green and now once I do that, you'll see the second color pops up, the inverted fill color. And let's say I want to set this to, let's say, a darker red. So now I can easily see the negative showing up in red, the positive showing up in green. So I, you know, without paying attention to where the axis is, where the zero are, I can easily see, okay, these are where the, the negative values are. These are the positive values. So it makes it just a bit easier to, to read the chart and you know be able to interpret it without having to you know spend any extra time analyzing it so that's in a nutshell eight eight uh, tips that I think could help you know make your charts a bit more readable depending on what you're wanting to show whether you've got one data series or you've got multiple if you have got positives and negatives so there's a lot of things you can do with charts to make them easier to read and I hope this was uh, helpful and you found it useful thanks for watching